of all the people that I worked with all through the years, a lot of kind of wild and strange and unique. Jerry Lee was he was right at the top of the list. <laughs> 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 I, I, I kid people now. <clears throat> I went to uh, Jerry Lee's seventy uh, fifth birthday. Over in Memphis, had a big party, and, and I was lucky enough to be invited. And I tell people, Jerry was really good. He seemed to have a big time, but he, he didn't know it till somebody told him the next day. So, that, <laughs> but but he was he he was so talented, and, and still is. Uh, I, a lot of times, I, I say if Jerry Lee probably had a maybe backed off of being. Whatever, I don't know, you call it maybe a little bit too wild or might have been as good or a bigger deal. I don't know. He didn't need to be in a bigger deal. But a couple of weird things that happened. One right here in Jackson, Tennessee. He played a show over here. And he, he come over here in a little private airplane and he, he picked him up at the airport. A, a fellow named, I, I, I think the promoter's name was Shelton. Anyway, they sent a car to get, pick him up at the airport to carry him to the Coliseum, and it was Chevrolet car. And Jerry, <laughs> he, he said, the killer don't ride in no Chevrolet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so a little town like Jackson, no limousines. The only limousines in this town was uh, Smith's Funeral Home. Had a couple of limousines. <laughs> so they called, and, and good good friends of mine, Jerry and Jack Smith, and hit their dad on the funeral home, and they got one of their limousines to go get him. <laughs> now, <laughs> the killer don't ride in no Chevrolet. And, and another time, we was recording back at Sun, the CD where all the guys were on, and, and I was standing out in front of Sun, and Jerry walked up, down the sidewalk and had a watch. I said, Jerry, man, that's a pretty watch. He just took it off his arm and throwed it to me. And, and I get to think about it, it's several things. One day he told me, he said, I got a racehorse I want to give you. And I lived out in the, in the country here now on a little 100-acre place. We called it a little farm, but it's a place. There. But we had some horses and, and, and a few cows. and th- So i go down to get it. He was telling me how great it was. And Joyce and me take off down to his house down south of Memphis, and he wasn't home. But I like to have never got that horse. It was wild as any horse that ever roamed the, <laughs> the hills. And finally, finally got that horse in the trailer and started to pull out and stopped. And Joy said, what do you stop for? I said, watch me. And I go open the door. And get that. Finally, made the horse get out of the trailer, shut the door, and she said, "What do you do that for?" I said, "Man, that horse is too wild." And and I kidded Jerry so many years later. Give me a, one of the finest race horses in the world, and so wild, I like to kill myself and the horse. Release it. He would. He was just that type of guy. And uh, now I'm on a. I, I probably can't get him to do it, but we're having. They are having a 60-year anniversary with me in uh, August the 16th at the, here in Jackson. And I'm going to try to get him to come over and see if he'll come over and do a sign because he, he's the only one left that I started with back then. So maybe he will. Would you have imagined back then that he might be one of the last ones standing? I would imagine back then and a long time since back then, he'd be the first one. To not be standing. <laughs> God, it's amazing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs>